Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. My name is Ari, and hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. Okay guys, so today's video I kind of wanted to revisit one of my most popular videos, notes on my phone, so overlook me getting in here. Um, so going on about three years ago, I did a video called Transitioning Later in Life, and I wanted to address some of the points that I made then, and some of the things that have come up since then. So um, this is going to be called Transitioning Later in Life Revisited. So when I did the video, one of the critiques that was most often given, I was 34, I think, at the time. And uh, now I'm 37, going on 38 very shortly. Um, was, well, 38 years old, 34 years old then, is not transitioning later in life. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I acknowledge what you're saying. There are people who transition a whole lot later than I did. But the point being that if you watch YouTube a lot and you watch uh, trans YouTubers, which at one point in time was, there were a lot more than I think there really are now, at least from what I've seen. Um, most of what you saw were people in their teens or 20s. So for those of us who were transitioning a little later, we felt like, you know, the older bunch, almost like we had missed the boat, so to speak. Uh, and it was just, in a lot of ways, no, we were not. It's just that those were the people who were more connected with the technology and being involved in that way, and not as many people in our age groups and above were doing videos on it. But anyway, I talked about in the first video two of the, you know, that, that it's kind of transitioning later, it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Because if you transition when you're young, then you get people saying, well, you're too young to make that kind of a decision, you can't possibly know that. If you transition later in life, it's, you know, often, well, why did you wait so long to transition then if you're really transgender? Um, so as I said, I started at 34 years old, and I talked a little bit then, and I'll talk now, uh, because when you transition later in life, it does add a level, a layer of complexity, and the biggest part of that is the longer we're around, the more connections we've made with people, the more people have known us a certain way for a longer period of time, and those kind of things are habit forming. You know, it's hard for, it, it can be harder for people to learn a new name, address you with a new pronoun when it's been 30, 40, 50, 60 years and plus that they've known you by that same pronoun so or that same name. So there is a level of complexity when we're older people transitioning. Um, I brought up a few points in the original video that were often thrown and that had been thrown at me. Um, and one of them was, well, you weren't this way as a child, so how can you say you were born this way? So to quickly address on that, just because you didn't know that, just because you as an outsider, as the cis person looking on, didn't know does not mean that we were not that way as a child. In a lot of cases, I came from a very old-fashioned, coal country type of community. I knew something was different about me, but I didn't even have the language to put that into words. People didn't know. I had no clue the word transgender. I don't think my parents did. Uh, my dad even recently, recently acknowledged that when we were talking, that he had no idea if I had said at that time I'm transgender, he would have been like, mm, what's that? You know, we didn't know. This was the 80s. And a lot of information hadn't made its way to those small rural communities when it comes to things like this. It wasn't on the news. It wasn't something that we were exposed to. So I didn't even have the words to communicate that. Uh, and there were a lot of things from, you know, the, I love to play with dolls. Um, I love to play dress up in girls' clothes. And, you know, that is not necessarily, that does not necessarily mean that a child is trans. But that was how I felt. I knew I was, I knew who I was even then, but I didn't have the words. So just because you're not aware of it, just because we didn't vocalize it to you during that time frame, 
doesn't mean that we weren't trans during that time frame. It's a process of learning who we are. And some people maybe didn't know that they were trans during that time frame. But that doesn't make them any less trans. Um, and, and there's also an important point that I, that I try to point out in the original video and I'll talk about now is societal signals. You know, a lot of us hid once we realized society's prejudices. We got that, that signal from our communities that anything outside of what they had decided was the ordinary, the acceptable, um, that, that we couldn't be that way and live a comfortable life, that we couldn't be that way, we couldn't be who we truly were and be accepted and, and have our families and have the respect and have our careers. So a lot of people made a conscious decision or even an un, you know subconscious decision to hide and bury very deep who we were. And a lot of times that comes out later in life. You know, we start to relax down. People tend to get a little bit more comfortable in who we are. And then we realize we've missed out on so much. And that's why we end up transitioning later in life. So the question was, why transition now then? If you made it all that time and you didn't transition, why are you transitioning now? Well, there are as many answers to that as there are people to ask. Um, I could probably give you 12 different answers just based on my own experience. But there were a lot of different things. Getting older was a big part of it. I worried that as I got older, maybe I was, you know, maybe when I got older as I grew up, I, I'd really get the, the bravery. I'd be able to be who I was. And as you realize you're getting older, you start to really take into account that you've missed out on some opportunities. And what happens if one day I keep passing that, you know, putting the, the goalposts further and further, well, this is when. But what happens when I'm reaching that part and I'm an old person, maybe I'm on my deathbed, and I've never truly been myself? That was a big fear factor for me. And it's something that I am very thankful that I went through in transition because now I don't worry about that. I am me. The people who know me know me as me. Whether they accept it or not, they know who Ari is. They may not like it, but I'm me. And that was a real fear. Um, sorry, looking at my notes. Hair loss was one of the concerns I talked about. If you're a trans woman, and it doesn't affect all people, but you know, if you haven't transitioned, you've got that testosterone. You may have a gene in there for male, what they call male pattern baldness, which is a misnomer. But, um, and in my case, I started seeing these little peaks right at the corner, and I was losing more and more hair. And that petrified me because the thought was, you know, I may never get the chance to truly be me. What if I lose all this? I keep losing it, and then, you know, I can't feel comfortable in my own skin, um, I, you know, it takes away that opportunity for me to feel comfortable in my own skin. And in some cases with hair loss like that, it's irreversible. Some people it's not irreversible. Thankfully, most of mine was reversible. As I said in that video that I made when I think I was about eight months on HRT, I had started noticing because I had suppressed with my medication the testosterone through uh, spironolactone, and I had my estrogen levels up, um, I had started to notice baby hairs coming back in those areas that I had started losing hair in. And that's continued to this day for the vast majority of it. Did it come back perfectly? No. But for the most part, it's at a comfortable spot. I didn't lose it all. I, a lot of it came back. So I was able to feel more comfortable in my skin. But that is a major concern um, for a lot of trans women who feel like they're losing, maybe losing their hair and may lose their opportunity to truly be who they want to be. Um, you know, I felt as if the person that I wanted to be was slowly disappearing because my chances to be me were getting further and further away. And, and, and I'm so thankful that I didn't let that disappear. You know, as I put in the original one, I was basically afraid that I would wake up on my deathbed and not having been myself. Um, I didn't want to wake up in the morning. I, I was miserable being me. I wouldn't say that I was necessarily what you'd call suicidal. 
uh, that was never really an issue with me. And I think part of that is because of the religious upbringing that I was brought up in, where suicide was a no-no. You know, that was definitely not on the table. Um, and even then, that played in my mind, and I'm thankful that it did. But I was, beyond all doubts, miserable before transitioning. Um, I felt like every day was a challenge. Every day, I felt like a liar. I felt like an actor. I felt like I should get an Academy Award for 34 years of acting in a role because I was never being allowed to be my true self in front of people. And the liar aspect was important. And I'm not calling people liars because they're in the closet or they haven't been able to transition. I'm talking about how I personally felt inside. And every day when I presented as a man, according to everything that everyone else saw, I felt like I was being a liar because I felt like I was living a lie. People weren't being given the opportunity to truly know me for me. I thought about the people in my life that I lost, that I loved, that never got the opportunity to know the true Ari. They never got to know who I was. They only got to see what I had been taught through culture to allow people to see. And a lot of that was very dishonest. It was a dishonest view of who I was. Um, and one of the things I commented about was people were saying, well, you've lived this long as a man or a woman, whatever your assigned gender was. Why not just finish it out that way? Well, the fact of the matter was, is I, I wasn't living at all up until that point in time. You know, living a lie is no life at all. Um, I felt like that, yes, I knew I was taking a risk that I might lose some people by coming out and being true to who I was. But the bigger fear was I thought I was losing myself in the process of not doing that. I was uh, losing the core of who I was. You know, you act for so long. You put on this act. You, you live in a lie to the point to where you start losing track of who the reality is. Who is the real you? And that's an exploration phase. And when you transition later in life, you really have to give yourself an opportunity to unlearn all of the crap that you've instilled in yourself. You're going to have to unlearn a lot of internalized transphobia because it happens. We take all that in and that has an impact. And some of the people who have the biggest problems with transphobia are trans people themselves because we've heard it and heard it and we've internalized it. And then we start applying it to ourselves and applying it to others. And we beat ourselves up for being who we are. And we start trying to be gatekeeper for other people and deciding, well, whether or not they're trans enough because maybe they don't experience the same thing we are or they don't seem as miserable as we are. So, you know, you've got to be exactly this miserable to ride this ride. Um, and that is a big part of the danger that comes in it. But you've got a lot, you've got a lot to unlearn. You've got a lot to unpack. You're going to have kind of this purple haze when you come out. When I first came out, everything in my life was about being trans. Literally looking back now, I would irritate myself. Because every conversation was about being transgender. It was like it was my all in all. And that's understandable because you're undergoing a major life change. And what I've found is the further you get into your transition, the more, the less, I should say, being trans is always at the forefront of your mind. I always know that I have to keep my guard up to a certain extent. I always know that I have to think about my safety, that I have been othered so much. But it's not like it was in the early days of transition when that was all I could think about. Now I'm just me. Sometimes those thoughts creep in, but more often than not, Ari is just Ari, not transgender Ari, just Ari. Um, but transitioning later in life is going to take time. Give yourself the chance to feel comfortable in your own skin. Give your chance, your, yourself a chance to accept that 
There might be physical things that maybe you can't do anything about. There may be things that resolve themselves, but some of them won't resolve themselves. And ultimately, we just have to get comfortable in our own skin. But anyway, I wanted to revisit that video because it seemed to be a topic that was important to people. Um, you know, be prepared if you're an older person, which is my chief demographic. I mostly get people who view my channel in that, you know, 40 to 55 age range based on the YouTube analytics. Um, but if you're watching it and you haven't transitioned yet and you are an older person, just because you see people on the channels, on, on YouTube, on the news that are much younger than we are, that are much younger than you are, that does not mean you have missed your boat. You can be yourself at age 70 just as much as you can at age 17. It will take time to unpack all of that. It will take time to get to your comfort zone. And it might even take more time for you because you have established a life as a certain type of person. But don't let it stop you. Don't decide, I'll, I'll just die miserable rather than be true to myself. There are risks. There are sacrifices when you're transitioning later in life. And they will be hard. Um, you know, I have friends that have lost family, uh, children, grandchildren, because they chose to transition and be true to who they are. I will never, you know, I, I'm not going to lessen the sacrifice that they had to make. That is a horrible, horrible thing that's happened to them through that. But, first and foremost, before you can be any good to anyone else, You've got to be good to yourself. You've got to be true to yourself. And the lesson that you're teaching, not only your children and your grandchildren, but everyone watching, is actually a positive lesson. You are showing others that at any age, you can be yourself. At any age, it is worth being brave enough to stand up and be true to who you are, true to how you were made, true to the very core of your being, and that is an inspirational message. So if you're an older person transitioning, I salute you. I applaud you. You are, even if you're just starting, and I've been in transition for a few years now, make no doubt, you're my hero because you have taken so much bravery. I look up to you every step of the way. Please be yourself. Acknowledge the hurts and the pains and get whatever help you need along the way. But never think that you're less than because it took you longer to get there. Because let's face facts, things have gotten more accepting even though we have problems. So it is harder for people of a certain generation to come to that acceptance. But you did it. You're working on it. So anyway, closing with my quote from Kesha, Don't let the bastards get you down. Be true to who you are. Love yourself whether anybody else accept it, accepts it or not. In, you know, in your immediate purview, there are going to be people out there who love and accept you. Be yourself and be proud of it. So, until the next video, lots of love, guys, and bye-bye.